let's go to some of the symptoms of iodine deficiency so we can really talk about what it is you might want to look for. Now, goiter is one of the big ones. So if you've ever gone to the doctor, you've been diagnosed with a goiter or thyroid nodules, maybe you've had an ultrasound of your thyroid and been told you have nodules. These are our symptoms of potential iodine deficiency. Now, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. Fatigue, brain fog, weight gain, muscle pain. These can also all be symptoms of iodine deficiency as it relates to the thyroid. Remember, if you're not adequately producing these hormones, these are some of the symptoms that can start to creep in and, and give you problems. Now, another one, I'm going to skip to the bottom of this one, breast tenderness. Um, it's been shown that iodine deficiency can create fibrocystic breast disease and severe breast tenderness in women. And so it's another very common cause, uh, a common cause or common symptom related to iodine deficiency. Now you'll see cretinism and FTT. FTT stands for failure to thrive. This is in more so in, in young toddlers and infants. Um, and so these are some of the hallmark or classic symptoms. We don't typically see these in major industrialized countries, not so much as we do in, say, developing nations where they don't have an iodine program where they're fortifying the salt with iodine. So these are some of your big symptoms of iodine deficiency. Now, that being said, how many of you that have these symptoms and have been to the doctor and given, been given a diagnosis of thyroid, low thyroid, have ever been tested for iodine deficiency. So in my opinion, if you have those symptoms, it's very critical before you just start taking medication that you're tested for iodine deficiency. Now, one of the things that the medications contain, remember that the medications, the preparations are T4, T3 preparations by default, they have iodine in them. The four and the three represent how many molecules of iodine. So when you see T4, T4, the four is how many molecules of iodine are in that hormone. Same thing with T3. T3 has three iodine. T4 has four iodine. So if you're taking uh, you know, preparations of medications, you're actually getting some iodine from the medication. So then the question becomes, are you actually benefiting from the iodine or are you actually benefiting from the thyroid hormone supplementation? My advice to you is if you have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you get tested for iodine deficiency before you go on this kind of lifelong trajectory of taking a medication for the rest of your life without actually knowing why you have an uh, or a hypothyroid condition in the first place. Remember, most doctors in the United States, particularly most industrialized countries, do not train in nutrition. The average in the U.S. is less than seven hours of nutritional training. Iodine is not one of those nutrients. It's very well studied in mainstream medicine. And, and uh, I have yet to see in 20 years of practice a single person come into my office with a hypothyroid, pre-existing hypothyroid diagnosis who'd actually had their iodine levels checked, whether it be by a, a urine output test or whether it be by a serum test. We'll talk more about those in just a minute. Uh, but haven't seen it happen, not, not by a mainstream medical practitioner, not in 20 years of practice. And so to me, it's, it's, it's almost a travesty how many women could be saved, how many men could be saved from having lifelong medication if they would just know whether or not they need to fortify their diet or shore up their diet a little bit with iodine. So very, very important that you understand that what iodine does is it supplies a major constituent of T3 and T4. Again, these two combined, okay, that's what iodine is. It's the four and it's the three. So if you've never heard that, if you've gone to the doctor and you've done the testing for thyroid and they've run your TSH and they've run your T4, and they've run your T3. Here's a common scenario in people with low thyroid is the TSH is increased, T4 is decreased, and T3 might be decreased. So this is kind of your common scenario in a lab test to confirm a hypothyroid diagnosis. Remember, one of the main reasons why TSH will be elevated is iodine deficiency. One of the main reasons why T4 would be low is iodine deficiency. Same thing with T3, iodine deficiency. Now, there are certainly there are other nutrients at play here. The TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And this, this is a hormone produced by your brain. And what it does is it travels to your thyroid gland 
and it tells your thyroid gland to produce T4. So here's your thyroid gland here. Okay, TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T4. And in doing that, what it, what it actually does is it tells the thyroid gland to trap more iodine from the diet. So from the food that you're eating, the thyroid gland itself will start trapping iodine to produce that T3 and that T4. Once T4 is produced, it, generally it's got to be converted to T3. Remember I said earlier that T4 is inactive and T3 is active. So it's T3 that actually communicates to your DNA. Okay, so T3 comes in and it attaches to something called a nuclear receptor and it activates your DNA to upregulate your metabolic function or your metabolism. And this is why thyroid hormone is so important because of growth and metabolism. Remember, metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions in your body. So that's whether you're, whether you're building new tissue or whether you're breaking old and damaged tissue down so that you can replace it with new tissue, that's metabolism. And that requires proper thyroid hormone function. So we need that iodine because the four, the three, both are iodine inclusive. Now to convert that T4 to T3 requires selenium. So this is another era that I see a lot is doctors don't ever check selenium levels to produce that, that T here in the thyroid hormone, the T is actually tyrosine. So if we say, what is that T? That T is tyrosine, that's an amino acid. And so many people that, again, that, that don't get adequate protein in their diet, have protein malnourishment, don't get adequate tyrosine, can struggle with adequate production of thyroid hormone as a result of tyrosine deficiency, selenium deficiency, iodine deficiency. Um, and one of the other things that has to happen since we're on the topic, is in order for your thyroid gland to properly trap iodine, that requires vitamin C and it requires vitamin B2. And so without those two nutrients, that doesn't happen very well. So you've got this kind of orchestration of different nutrients that work kind of synergistically with each other. Just like in the orchestra, you've got violins, you've got cellos, you've got big drums. They all sound beautiful when they play together. Well, it's the same thing here. Your thyroid can work beautifully if all these nutrients are playing together, but if you don't have adequate iodine, and you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism and your doctor did not test you for iodine deficiency, you need to go back and ask him to run that test. Additionally, it might not be a bad idea to ask him to run tests for tyrosine, selenium, vitamin B2, and vitamin C as well to just confirm uh, that you don't have other nutrient deficits that are playing a role in this problem. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.